So you're working on the IT help desk, but you want to make the transition to cybersecurity. But I bet you think you need extensive training or IT certifications to make the transition. Wrong. In this video, I'm going to show you three overlooked skills that you already have that will help you make the transition into cybersecurity in 2022. Hey, what's up, cyber heroes? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, I'm Boyd Clues, and I'm an internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, and I help IT guys upgrade their jobs into a six-figure cybersecurity career. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. Hey guys, what I've noticed after mentoring over a thousand IT professionals, many of us have a lot more skills and experience than we'd realize, and we don't give ourselves credit for it. So in this video, I'm hoping to shed some light on three important areas that will help you make this transition into cybersecurity quickly. Now, if you go through these steps and you implement, you do the things that I'm telling you to, be sure to give your man a nice subscribe, like on this video, and a Google review after you land your high paying job. Are you ready to jump into number one? Let's go. Patch management. Repeat after me. Patch management. Now you might be thinking, okay, Boyd, so I've installed Windows updates. Whoopity do. I've updated some applications. Whoopity do. What do you mean? That's the problem right there. Most IT guys, they completely devalue what they're doing in an organization. So what you got to do is take a step back and look at everything that you're doing from a business standpoint. So let's take a look at patch management. We only do patch management for one or two reasons. Number one, we would install a patch if there's a new feature available and maybe an operating system or an application. We install the update, boom, we got new functionality. But that's actually a small percentage of the updates. When it comes to patch management, it's usually repairing flaws in the software, which leads to vulnerabilities. Ah, that's a very high paying word right there. Vulnerability management. That's exactly what you're doing when you're installing patches, whether it be desktops, servers, it does not matter. If you are installing patches, what you're doing is you're helping patch critical systems by removing vulnerabilities from them, which lowers the risk profile that a company could be attacked. Every application is prone to attack, and as new vulnerabilities are found, vendors that create these applications and operating systems release patches into the wild. And this is where you get Patch Tuesday from, right? So you have all these patches that we install on these systems, but we're not doing it just for fun. We're not doing it just for extra functionality. We're actually doing it to protect the organization. But if you don't realize this, it's hard to sell that experience that, hey, I'm not just a help desk guy. I'm actually a vulnerability management specialist. Because if you spent any time working in the NOC, the SOC, or the help desk like I did, I patched just about everything you could dream of. And I was good at it. Vulnerability management specialist. You're welcome. Let's jump into number two, which is, you know what? Number two used to be something that I completely hated. But as I got older and I realized the impact of what I was doing, I loved it. Number two, virus removal and malware removal. Now, this may seem like nothing to you. It's an everyday boring task. But again, we need to take a step back and we need to think about what value are we bringing to the business? If you haven't noticed, I talk a lot about value. The reason why is there's a correlation between the value that you bring to the organization and the paycheck that you get. Oftentimes, you're bringing significant value, but you don't realize it. So therefore, the company is not going to pay you. They know, they know what you're doing. That's why they've assigned you the task, but you need to know. So those things connect and you can get the pay that you deserve. But when it comes to vulnerability, vulnerability management, virus removal, as well as malware removal, again, we're talking about vulnerability management. We're talking about asset protection. This all falls into the cybersecurity domain of asset protection, vulnerability management. Again, these are key words that actually should be on your resume. You could look for cybersecurity positions in vulnerability management. You could look for positions as a antivirus administrator, managing consoles, deploying antivirus to systems, removing viruses and malware from critical systems in the environment. Why? Depending on the environment that you work in, some of the biggest credit card breaches that ever happened were due to malware on systems. So you can think about malware that scrapes 
credit card data out of memory, scrapes credentials out of memory. You also have malware that scrapes sensitive information from web servers as people are making payment transactions online. So these are very, very high income skills. And since you've been doing the work on the help desk, there's no reason why you couldn't do it on a larger scale. It's the same principle. You just need to realize how important it is and how valuable it is to the organization. When you understand that and you can speak to the principles of vulnerability management, of virus removal, you are going to be seen as someone worthy of a big paycheck. We need to get our mind to match up with the skill set so that we can actually speak to it and walk into that big cybersecurity salary. And number three, now, depending on where you're working at, maybe you don't jive with what I said was, I almost said requirement one and two, clearly I'm an otter, with number one and number two. But number three, if you've worked on the help desk, I know you've done it. So what we're talking about here is account creation and folder permissions. And I know you're thinking like, Boyd, what the heck does that have to do with cybersecurity? And I'll tell you, everything, everything, this actually falls in the domain of identity management and access controls. What we're doing is we're creating accounts that have specific permissions that were approved by leadership management so that people only have access to the things that they need at a minimum. This is the principle of least privilege. It's where you only make, you make sure that the person has just enough access to do their job, nothing more. When, whenever we're creating these accounts and we're setting up folder permissions and application permissions, this is exactly what we're doing. We are being identity management administrators. There's entire roles at companies out there where you could be an IDM administrator and make six figures and beyond. But again, you got to believe it. You got to understand the value that you're bringing to the company. What you're doing is you're protecting confidential files and applications from being viewed by people that don't need to view them. These are the selling points that you want to use not only on your resume, but when you're interviewing for roles at different jobs, because they want to understand that you understand the impact that you bring with these different skill sets. So that was number three. And this is a good time for you right now to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you get notified whenever I drop new content, because I'm always going to give you the best that I have to make sure that you can make this quick career transition into cybersecurity. But I got a question for you. Did you realize that these skills such as folders and account creation and patch management, that these things were actually cybersecurity skills. Did somebody tell you that you needed to go get a certification or a college degree before you could make that transition? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. And because I love you guys, I got a bonus for you. Here's number four. Number four is interdepartmental consulting. That's like a fancy hundred dollar word. All I'm saying is if you supported different departments within a business that you're working at, that's actually consulting. Most people don't realize they actually have consulting experience, but they think that they need to work for a consulting company or they, they need to start their own business. But when you look at each individual business unit as a customer or a client, when you're providing tech support, when you're providing administration services for them, you're actually doing internal consulting which is a transferable skill to just about any business that you go to. And consultants make a ton of coin. If it was up to me in my long-term career, if I was going to go into cybersecurity, I would eventually become a consultant because again, ton of money to be made. Anyway, those are underutilized skills that you could use to highlight on your resume and in the interviews that will help you to stand out from other people that you're interviewing against. Because truth be told, most people only understand how to perform a task, but they don't understand the why. And the why is what's going to get you paid because the why means you understand the importance and you understand the value that you're going to bring to the organization. And that's what companies want to hire you for. If you're looking for additional support with making this transition to cybersecurity, and you're looking for a mentor, I'd love to be that guy. I've helped more than 500 IT professionals upgrade their jobs into a six-figure cybersecurity career. You can actually check out a case study of how we've done that at boycluis.com forward slash GRC. So, cyber heroes, that's it. Those were three ways 
plus a bonus of overlooked skills that you could use to make a transition into a high paying cybersecurity career in 2022. Again, if you like this, you found some value from it, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.